Hi everyone, welcome to this month's Real English video. In these videos, I'm taking you around my favourite parts of the city of Edinburgh, telling you about its history and culture and giving you a fantastic English lesson at the same time. Today, we're going to be talking about one of my favourite sons of Edinburgh, the wonderful poet Robert Ferguson. So, let's go! If you had come to the Canongate Kirkyards in Edinburgh in 1787, you might have bumped into Robert Burns, trying to find the gravestone of one of his favourite and most admired poets, Robert Ferguson. He was horrified to learn that this man, who had inspired so much of Robert Burns' own writing, had been buried in a pauper's grave. Robert Ferguson is known as Edinburgh's poet. He's the man that Robert Burns called his elder brother in misfortune, by far my elder brother in the muse. But these days, and for a very long time, this poet, who was such an inspiration to Robert Burns and many other writers, has been largely forgotten about. So who was Robert Ferguson? How did he inspire Robert Burns so much? And why don't we know anything about him? Robert Ferguson was born and bred in Edinburgh. He studied at the Edinburgh High School, managed to get a bursary for Dundee High, and eventually went on to study at St Andrews. He was forced to drop out of St Andrews, however, in 1768 after his father died, and he had to return to Edinburgh to look after his mother. He began working as a clerk, which is what he would do for the rest of his days. But he also started writing poems. Ferguson had moved back to Edinburgh in the beginnings of what would become the Scottish Enlightenment. This was an incredible cultural movement that went on to affect the world in so many different ways. It was a melting pot of ideas, of culture, of science, and Robert Ferguson found himself in the middle of it. This was the greatest inspiration for his writing, the city of Edinburgh and the lives that lived in it. This melting pot of ideas that formed the Scottish Enlightenment also reflected the mix that was in Edinburgh at those times. Edinburgh was a lively, claustrophobic, vulgar, intellectual and exciting city to be a part of. And the words that Ferguson wrote definitely reflected that. His poetry embraced all of these aspects of Edinburgh, and he followed in the tradition of mock elegies and satirical addresses in broad Scots in his writing. A great example of this was the poem that he wrote to Dr Samuel Johnson when he came to visit Edinburgh University. Johnson was famous for having said that the Scots ate oats while the English fed it to their horses. And Ferguson wrote a poem talking about all the wonderful things that he could eat in a Scottish banquet. This style of poetry was made famous by a poet called Alan Ramsey, who was the one that inspired Robert Ferguson, and of course would go on to inspire Robert Burns, thanks to Robert Ferguson's writing. The fact that Robert Ferguson wrote in Scots was what inspired Robert Burns to do it as well, when he realised that he didn't have to write in formal English in order to be able to express himself, and was able to use the language that he used in his day-to-day -day life. Robert Ferguson was extremely prolific, writing the majority of his work in about two years. His poems were a huge success, and everyone was desperate to be able to get the latest Robert Ferguson poem when it came out of the printers. Perhaps his most famous poem is one called Old Reeky. Old Reeky is the name for Edinburgh, Old Smelly, because it really wasn't a very hygienic town in those days. This poem almost reads like a documentary and it charts a day in the life of the city of Edinburgh. It includes people from all walks of life, schoolboys, porters, shopkeepers, whores, lovers, beggars and intellectuals. The poem's an incredible historical resource of what life must have been like in day-to-day -day Edinburgh in the 18th century. So if Robert Ferguson was so popular and had inspired so many writers, including our most famous poet, the national bard, Robert, uh, Robert Burns, why does no one really know who he is? Well, the main reason for that is how he died. Towards the end of 1773, Robert Ferguson developed depression. And it was a depression that he never really got rid of and plagued him until his death. He began to withdraw from his friends, often not seeing them for days, even weeks on end, and he would begin to question all of the things about his work, burning a lot of his manuscripts. Some biographers have described his condition as 
religious melancholia, which is a kind of psychotic disorder where you obsess over religious doctrine. Whether or not this is the case, the illness definitely stopped him from being able to continue with his work. He had a brief improvement with his depression, but then things got worse after he suffered a really bad accident and had a terrible blow to his head. The injury that he received falling down the stairs left him insensible, and many people thought that he was simply mad. His elderly mother was at this point unable to take care of him, and so he was taken to a place called Darien House. Darien House otherwise known as the Mad House, was Edinburgh's Bedlam. This is what counted as a mental institution in the 18th century, but really these places were no better than prisons. Patients in these institutions were locked up and chained to walls. Ferguson would have just had a cold, damp cell with some straw on the ground to sleep in, and little to no sanitation to speak of. These were the conditions his old university friend, Dr Andrew Duncan, found him in when he came to visit. And over the visits, Dr Duncan became increasingly more appalled at the horrific environment that these patients were expected to live in. These horrendous conditions would ultimately be the death of Robert Ferguson. He simply wasted away and one day died in October 1774. However, his illness would prove to be another of his legacies along with his incredible poetry. Due to the horrific conditions he had witnessed his friend experience, Duncan began to fight for a more appropriate institution to take care of people with mental illness. After a long fundraising appeal, he was able to get enough funds together to be able to open the Edinburgh Lunatic Asylum. And the land where it was originally built now houses today's Royal Edinburgh Hospital, the hospital that deals with mental illness in Edinburgh. In it, you can find the Dr. Andrew Duncan Clinic and as well the Robert Ferguson Unit, which is dedicated to people who have suffered head injuries. Ferguson died impoverished with no money, which meant that he had to be buried in a pauper's grave. And that's how Robert Burns found him when he came to visit the Edinburgh Canongate Kirkyard, looking for his headstone. Robert Burns was horrified that this man who had meant so much to him and inspired him so much in his writing didn't have a proper headstone and so he made sure to get one for him. Burns paid for Ferguson's headstone and he also had it inscribed with a stanza of a poem that he wrote for him. No sculptured marble here, nor pompous lay, no storied urn nor animated bust. This simple stone directs pale Scotia's way to pour her sorrows o'er her poet's dust. Over time, the headstone became eroded and needed fixing and in stepped another Edinburgh literary legend to help out. The writer Robert Louis Stevenson. Robert Louis Stevenson had also been born and grown up in Edinburgh and while hadn't suffered from Ill mental illness had certainly suffered from a lot of physical illness during his lifetime. Tragically he died before he was able to um, complete the headstone. However these were the words that he wanted recorded. This stone originally erected by Robert Burns has been repaired at the charges of Robert Louis Stevenson and is by him rededicated to the memory of Robert Ferguson as the gift of one Edinburgh lad to another. I don't think we can underestimate the legacy that Robert Ferguson left us. Of course his incredible writing which went on to inspire our national bard Robert Burns and many other writers in Scotland too. But it's not only that which I think he's incredible for, it's the legacy that he's left us of the ongoing battle in improving mental health and attitudes towards how we can help and treat those that are suffering from mental health, which I think is another amazing part of Robert Ferguson's story. In 2004, Robert Ferguson even got a new monument. The sculptor David Annand made this bronze sculpture of Robert Ferguson walking down the Cannon Gate. It's a huge hit with tourists and you can see that someone's even given him a beautiful scarf to wear. No trip down the Cannon Gate is complete these days without a selfie with Rab here. With you, I can be sad with you. So if you find yourself in Edinburgh's Cannon Gate, please take a minute to stop and take a wee selfie with Robert Ferguson. I'm sure he would have loved it. But these days, and for a very long time, this poet, who was such an inspiration to Robert Burns, and eventually went on to study at St Andrews. This 
was an incredible cultural movement that went on to affect the world in so many different ways. When he realised that he didn't have to write in formal English in order to be able to express himself and was able to use the language that he used in his day-to-day -day life. His poems were a huge success and everyone was desperate to be able to get the latest Robert Ferguson poem when it came out of the printer. Oliki is the name for Edinburgh, Old Smelly, because it really wasn't a very hygienic town. He began to withdraw from his friends, often not seeing them for days, even weeks on end. had a brief improvement with his depression, but then things got worse. Over time, the Thanks so much for watching this video of Real English Week. Hope to see you next time. Please remember to subscribe so that you never miss an episode. And we look forward to seeing you soon. Bye!